Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to the monthly Parkinson's telehealth. Uh, on the screen, uh, before he switched over to me, there was a brochure or an information page up about our upcoming Parkinson's Power Summit, and I just wanted to talk about that for just a moment. Um, if, uh, if you haven't heard about it already, September 6th, uh, here in Spokane or in Airway Heights, we're having the, the Parkinson's Power Summit, and we have some amazing speakers confirmed that's really important, confirmed that they're going to be here and joining us um, in uh, Spokane. A one includes our new movement disorder specialist, uh, Dr. Jason Aldred, um, and one of our Parkinson's community members who helped found our uh, Tremble Clefts, and she's going to talk about Parkinson's and the effect on family caregivers from the view of a Parkinson's patient, and it's really cool the way her presentation goes and then our um, keynote speaker is Pen Ben Petrick and if you don't know who he is I recommend you look him up on um, the internet you'll be able to find a link of him um, on our website soon but Ben Petrick is a retired uh, professional baseball player um, who's very inspiring I uh, was diagnosed in 99 when he was in his early 20s with Parkinson's um, so 1999 and has had two DBS surgeries has a family he played baseball for four years after his initial diagnosis so it's he's got a lot to tell it's very cool and then we have three workshops going on in the afternoon a whole bunch of vendors a lot of good stuff going on so on our website I don't have that up right now but on our website there's a registration form that you can download print out and send or you can um, email me or uh, there will be a link to actually register and pay online in the next week um, Today we are going to hear yeah, from good. two speakers, well actually one, but I, I want you both to be introduced, so I'm going to let you guys introduce when you come up. I want you to do a quick bio on yourself, but it's going to be on nutrition and anti antioxidants and um, practical ways you can use nutritional information every day for everybody. So um, we have a few places that we've actually talked to in our network. Uh, it, we are pretty sure that it's going to be a quiet day for our sites because everybody doesn't want to get too cooked when they go out the door at 100 degrees in most places. But it will be the same as usual for our presentation. We will um, go ahead and have our presentation with our wonderful speakers and then at the end we will do a question and answer uh, round with all of our sites. Um, so until then, we'll have you mute your microphones, and I would like to invite our speakers up to come up and introduce themselves, because if I do it, I will mangle everything. Come on up. Oh, God bless you. Mute your mic. So please go ahead. Good afternoon, and thank you for coming. A little closer. Uh, I'm Danelle Crabtree, and I'm with Corporate Health Alliance here in Spokane. And, uh, we are a wellness company that is involved with um, helping businesses uh, look at their wellness programs and uh, various different uh, aspects of uh, wellness. And one of the things we do is um, coaching, and we have a coach with us today. Our contract this is Sabrina Gonder. Um, I am a certified medical assistant, that is my background, and uh, I worked in doctor's offices for many years, and I have a disruptive technology to tell you about, but Sabrina's going to tell you why you want to know about that. So Sabrina, I'll, I'll let you tell you a little bit more about you. Hey. Good afternoon. Can you all hear me okay? It's good? All right. Thank you. I'm not used to using a mic, so bear with me. Um, so like Danelle said, uh, my name is Sabrina Gonder, and I'm a board-certified health coach. Does anybody here know what that is? I get that a lot. <laughs> so what a board certified health coach does is educates and support a person to live their best life. That can be around food, nutrition, movement, exercise, relationships, work, um, spirituality, all kinds of things. So everything that you can think of that happens and is involved in your life, a health coach can work with and around. Primarily food. I studied over 100 different dietary theories. So I, I know a lot about some of this stuff right up here. Um, I'm going to talk about antioxidants, the importance of antioxidants, and free radicals, and what free radicals are. And then I'm going to shift into some nutrition 
discussion and information. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what's trending in wellness right now. So it'll be fun. Um, so antioxidants, you know, what are they and why should you even care? Does anybody here know what antioxidants are? Well, Dr. Oz went to the streets and asked, and nobody knew what they were either. So you're in really good company. And that's why we're going to talk to you about them today. So if you look at the orange and the apple that I have up here, they are um, they're bright and rich in color. They're vibrant. So that is partially due to the antioxidants that are in the food themselves. These are four examples of where you'll find antioxidants. And the first is in, in vitamins or supplementation. So A, B, C, E, those are all antioxidants, right? So then the next category are oils. So believe it or not, oils have antioxidant qualities. And I'll talk more about oils a little bit later on. But palm and um, argon oil have antioxidant properties in them. Then the next category is fruit extracts. So pomegranate and apple, those are two examples of where you can get antioxidants. And then the fourth example is tea. A lot of us know that green tea is high in antioxidants. That's been highly advertised. But black tea also has antioxidant qualities as well. So these are just four places that you can get uh, beneficial antioxidants. figured it out. I'm so excited. Okay. Then uh, this slide is talking about antioxidants and being your first line of defense against free radicals. And I'll explain in the next slide what free radicals are. But think of when you're consuming food, go for the deeper, darker, richer colored fruits and vegetables. So I brought, and they're sad right now because they've been weathered from the heat, but this is a, this a, just, is a, a just a slice of... Um, Lettuce. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's lettuce, but it's, it's lettuce, iceberg, lettuce. iceberg lettuce. So this is the type of lettuce I tell everybody to avoid versus this guy, which is romaine. Can you see the color difference in that? Okay. So when you're choosing fruits and vegetables, go for the deeper, darker, richer colors. Um, I fight my husband with this one all the time. He won't eat this one. He likes this one. There's no nutritional value in this one. So grab the darker ones. The middle slide or middle picture of this slide is the fruit and vegetable phytonutrients. And you'll see that there's a rainbow of colors up there. Those represent the different colors of our foods. So you want to try to eat a rainbow, a uh, rainbow color of foods. However, majority of them, you do want them to be as deep and dark and as lush and rich as possible. Blueberries are a really good example. They're very high in antioxidants. They're deep and dark and rich. But do, do incorporate all fruits and vegetables in your diet. The last picture, the upper right for you, are, are different super herbs that we can, all of these actually can be grown in your house, uh, your windowsill possibly. And they're all just really high in antioxidants. And they're common herbs um, like parsley, sage, rosemary, thyme, cilantro, oregano, basil and mint. And a lot of these have very versatile uses and they're very rich in phytonutrients. And phytonutrients really boost up your antioxidant levels. I apologize for this slide. I thought it was kind of cute and it's not very clear, not to, very read. clear to read. And I need you to yeah, use your imagination for a moment, a moment here. here. Imagine these are cells, these are cells. and they're full yeah. of lots of atoms, okay? <laughs> And these little balls over here are electrons. What free radicals like to do is they like to come over and they like to try to steal the energy. They like to try to steal that electron and damage this cell. And the damaged cell is what causes the free radical damage. And that causes aging and disease and all the things that we don't want. So we want our cells to be fully protected have a full circle of electrons going on, and that protects it from the free radical damage. And that's what antioxidants do. They put a circle of protection around those cells to keep them from getting damaged and diseased. Does that make sense? Okay. Let's 
So I know a couple of you were able to get scanned before the presentation. So all of you will get that opportunity before the end of the day. And I'll talk more about what the scanner is and what we're talking about when we talk about the scanner and antioxidants. But do you know what your antioxidant score is? I know a couple of you do. Right, great, thank you. So if you don't, don't worry, you're gonna have a chance to get scanned and uh, we will tell you what that means. And the way we do it is we use this neat little machine, this device, um, let me grab it for a minute. So this is called the Biophotonic Scanner. It is wireless, and it, in less than 30 seconds, or right about 30 seconds, just using your hand right here, it measures your antioxidant level. And your antioxidants give you a, a indication of your overall nutritional wellness. Now, this isn't a medical device, but it's a really cool disruptive technology that now we can, without taking any blood from you, without taking any skin from you, we can show you what your antioxidant level is. And so if it's not where you want it to be, and honestly, mine was 20,000, which is a D, the first time I scan, then there's lots of things you can do about it. And the best thing is, starting today, you can ingest more fruits and vegetables. So it doesn't have to be a really difficult thing to increase that level. So. What your nutritional wellness looks like depends on a lot of different factors. I'm gonna go into those here in just a minute, but just think about that. Think about your overall lifestyle, how you feel. Um, I've had people predict exactly where they're gonna scan on this device. It's pretty interesting. And I've had people who say, I don't wanna know. But it's really an important number to know because once you know what it is, it may surprise you. It may be higher than you expect. But if it's lower than you expect, then there's something you can do about it. So these are some of the things that influence your score. Um, I think most of us know or would understand that your diet. So a minimum recommendation is five servings of fruits and vegetables. What we're finding is that's a really low number. The new numbers that are recommended are 11 to 13 servings. Now if that sounds really impossible, let me show you. This is a serving. It's a half a cup. Okay, so one tip that I tell my clients is to consider having smoothies because you can fit a lot of fruits and vegetables, fruits and vegetables into, a, into smoothie. a smoothie. I generally, I generally start my day with at least five just from the smoothie that I have. So it's much easier to get that 11 to 13 number by doing that. How many of you juice or drink smoothies or? Okay, good. Do you enjoy it? Yes, good. Fruits, vegetables, a combination? Tomato juice, okay. Good for you. Yeah. Um, I put spinach in. Spinach really doesn't have a lot of flavor. And if you put a little bit of apple, a little bit of grape, something that's sweet, it brings out that sweet flavor. There's so many different combinations that you can do. And it's really a great way to use up food that's on the verge of going bad. Um, bananas are a great example of that. I am kind of fussy when it comes to bananas, so they start getting any color on them and I throw them in my freezer and use them for my smoothie. I've done that with avocados, I've done it with lettuce. So things that look like they're not gonna make it or maybe you wouldn't put into a salad, they'll, they'll usually keep over in the freezer and you can just throw them into your smoothie and, and use them and get the nutritional value from them. So supplementation, I told you that I was only 20,000 the first time I scored. I had just lost a family member, I was renovating a home, and I had a new job. So I had a little bit of stress going on. So I decided to turn to a good supplement. And it made all the difference. I now scan at 48,000. And with a supplement, what you want to do is you want to make sure that it is well formulated and it has phytonutrient antioxidants in it. There's a lot of supplements out there. So it's really important to do a little bit of research and investigation and find one that's really good for you. There is a site called consumerlabs.com and you can research 
pretty much any supplementation that's on the market out there. So your BMI is the third item on the list. So that stands for body mass index. So people who are carrying some extra weight tend to have a lower antioxidant score. So that can be a factor as well. The biggest one, in my opinion, is your lifestyle. So if I take a tobacco smoker and scan them, they'll generally scan 10,000 points lower than a non-smoker. So our machine starts reading at 10,000, and the highest score I've heard of is 103. You want to be 50 or above. Um, so somebody who might typically scan 30 if they smoke, they'll usually scan around the 20 range. So remember, in this instance, higher is better. Dr. Oz scored 75,000, so he's, he's doing a lot of things right. Another lifestyle influencer is managing stress. We all have stress, but it's how we manage that stress, and that definitely will affect your score. I shared with you when I scanned, I had a little bit of stress going on. That did definitely affect my score. Sunlight. Sunlight's good for us. We get vitamin D from sunlight, right? But too much sunlight gives us free radical damage or antioxidants, uh, needing more protection there. Pollution and toxins. Pollutions, when I first started thinking of pollutions, I thought of industrial pollutions. But we have pollutions kind of all around us. We get in our car and we have, you know, exhaust fumes. That's a pollution. We have toxins just being in a room. Uh, there's off gases coming from plastics and carpet and glue and paint and lighting. So we really are bombarded by those free radicals pretty much all the time in, in all of our scenarios. So that's right. It's really important to keep the antioxidant level really, really high. Then your genes. We all have genes, gene history. And um, that's your body's predetermined ability to absorb carotenoids or antioxidants. The interesting thing is they've learned that only 5 to 10 percent of that will get turned on, but it's turned on by those lifestyle, those lifestyle items that we talked about earlier. So you can have the predisposition to have low carotenoid levels. However, your lifestyle can change whether those get turned on or turned off. These two statements are two of my favorite. So Hippocrates, Hippocrates said, let food be thy medicine, and medicine be thy food. How powerful is that? But I love this, this second one. I, I saw this in a store, and it just made me laugh. It says, try organic food, or as your grandparents called it, food. And I don't know exactly when things shifted, but I remember when I was little, we always had a garden, and nothing was labeled organic or or otherwise. And so I did want to talk a little bit about labeling. So I don't know if you're aware, but there's conventional food, there's genetically modified food, and I'm not really going to go into that today. That could be a whole other discussion. And then there's organic food. And your PLU code on your fruit designates the difference. So for instance, this starts with a four and it's four digits. If it starts with a four or a five, it's conventionally grown. So I don't know if this was sprayed or not. Same with this apple. Now this apple is organic. And a lot of times, because we purchase and shop with our eyes, we would purchase the conventionally grown over the organically grown because they don't always look quite as beautiful. They're, they're not going to be polished or waxed or, or coated. And so these start with a nine. And this happens to be five digits. So the organic start with a nine. Genetically modified start with an eight. And conventional is a four or a five. And I did notice that Safeway was running an organic campaign uh, educating consumers that the nine does mean organic. So that's exciting to see that out there. Um, I buy as much as I can from local farmers. It's not always easy to do, but it's really um, important to me. And it's becoming, it's becoming easier. They're, they're trying to get more of that 
to the local place. So the Environmental Working Group, EWG, has the Dirty Dozen list. And so these, we, uh, some people can't afford to buy everything organic, but these are 12 items that you really want to try to buy organic if you can. And the first one is apples. So we're Washington, the apple state, right? <laughs> we want to make sure our apples are organic. A lot of times the apples we buy aren't aren't even from here. So do pay attention to that. Um, the second one is celery, cherry tomatoes, cucumbers, grapes, hot peppers, nectarines and peaches, potatoes, that one surprised me, spinach, strawberries, and sweet bell peppers. So if you are consuming these, try to get these with the nine the number nine on it, and that would mean it's organic. There's um, just a lot of pesticides on these particular foods, and so that's why you want to avoid getting the conventionally grown versions. And the, if you go to the Environmental Working Group's website, they have an app, so you can download this app if you'd like to have it on your phone. You also can just go online and read it, and they do update it as things change. If an, a, a different produce becomes more heavily sprayed, then they'll add that to the list and, and change it. Oops. You seem to be stuck. I can just use that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, I'm technically challenged. I don't even touch the thermostat in my home. <laughs> okay, so now I wanted to talk about healthy cooking oils. Um, there's been a lot of talk about different oils out there, and my favorite is organic, unrefined coconut oil. And pretty much nowadays you can find it in most grocery stores. I didn't bring it today because it melts at 76 degrees. It is really wonderful though. It is great to cook with. It will give a slight coconut flavor to what you're cooking uh, in it. So a stir fry, but it's not overpowering. It's a really healthy oil. I'll talk more about oil pulling in a, in a coming up slide that, um, upcoming slide that that's really interesting. You can use it for sunscreen. After you've had some base exposure to the sun, you can use coconut oil to uh, protect your skin from the sun. You can use it to condition your hair. I use it to take my eye makeup off. It's really an amazing oil. And a lot of people, we've been trained to go fat-free, stay away from the oils. It's really not accurate and, and more is being brought out about the good healthy oils. So coconut is by far my favorite. Um, the other oils that are good as well are avocado oil, olive oil, ghee, which is clarified butter. I've actually seen that in the store now. Palm oil and butter. For our brain health, we really the body really needs two to five tablespoons a day of a good healthy oil. You can put the oil, the coconut oil in particular, goes well in a smoothie, believe it or not. So you might try that. Plumbing problems. Yes. Two to five tablespoons. You're welcome going to move on to plumbing problems. And I'm talking about our internal plumbing problems, not your home plumbing problems. Uh, the first question I have for most people is, are you drinking enough water? How many of you know how many ounces of water a day we're supposed to drink? 64. How much? 64. 64? That's a good guess. 80? 80 ounces? Yeah, yeah, I've heard that for a really long time. Well, it's actually very personal. And so this is this is the, the new rule, if you will. It's half your body weight in ounces of water. 
So if I weigh 200 pounds, I want to drink 100 ounces of water a day. And the way that I'm able to do that is I have a vessel I know how many ounces it contains. This isn't normally what I drink out of, but I know this is 20 ounces. So for me, I need to drink a little bit over three of these a day, and I'm at two and a half. So I'm doing pretty good for today. Some days are more difficult than others. If you're outside in this weather, you need to drink even more than that. But that's a goal for you to strive for, and it really does help with uh, plumbing problems. Fiber is another big, big issue. Um, Juicing is pretty popular right now, and, and juicing is fine when you juice. However, a lot of times you lose that fiber because the fiber often is in the skin of the fruit or vegetable. So keep that in mind. Um, eating the whole fruit or vegetable is, is generally better. You're going to get that fiber benefit. But I found something interesting on fiber, and I thought, it was, I thought I'd just read it to you. Um, neurological. Conditions such as MS and Parkinson's can cause constipation. Usually, though, it goes with another symptom such as trouble with urination, double vision, or gait problems. And Dr. Gingrich says that Institute of Medicine recommends that men under 50 eat about 38 grams of fiber. That's a lot of fiber. And women, 25 grams. Adults who are over 50 require less generally due to decreased um, consumption of food. So the male should consume 30 grams and a woman 21 grams. So there's some really good sources of fiber, and I wanted to share with you four different categories, and these are the highest fiber foods in those categories. And the first one is legumes. And I think legumes get really forgotten. They're an inexpensive food. Uh, some people don't know what to do with them, so I think that's one of the reasons that they kind of get forgotten. And some people are afraid of the after effect of them, too. But these are wonderful, and if prepared correctly, it takes that gas issue out of the equation. So split peas, lentils, black beans, and lima beans. And for vegetables, artichokes, peas, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts. <laughs> I see some faces out there. Have you ever tried them grilled? I've tried them all Always. Time. Okay. You're going to hear more about Brussels sprouts. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then for fruit, raspberries, blackberries, avocado. Uh, avocado is a fruit. You probably all knew that. I would have had an example, but my son didn't know it was for today, and he ate it last night. And pears. And then for grains, the first one probably won't surprise you, bran flakes, whole wheat pasta, pearled barley, and oatmeal. And then the third question I have is, are you moving? Uh, we live in a very sedentary world now, especially with computers and TVs and all the things that we have. And sitting has actually been referred to as the new smoking because we do sit a lot. So I just just listened to a great um, video on the fact that we need to get up and move once an hour. And I thought that was really great. doesn't mean we have to get up and do aerobics or jumping jacks or anything strenuous, but just get up and move our bodies. And walking is one of the best ways to to do that. So keep that in mind. I know that that's something I struggle with, especially having been in school for the last last almost two years. Um, lots of computer time, lots of sitting. And so I'm just encouraging you. I'm in that same boat. and I'll read them off to you, of coconut oil and, and oil pulling in particular. So oil pulling 
is really simple. It's been around for a really long time, and it's really making a resurgence in popularity. So that lovely coconut oil I was talking to you about, you take a tablespoon of the coconut oil, you put it in your mouth, it melts at 76 degrees, so it very quickly dissolves in your mouth. You just swish it around a little bit for 15 to 20 minutes. I like to do this when I'm in the shower. A friend of mine does it while she's meditating. You can do it anytime. The important thing is not to swallow it because what it's doing is it's pulling the bacteria and the toxins out of your mouth, and that's where digestion starts. So it's really important to... Uh, do this on occasion. Some people do it every day. Uh, Dr. Mercola does it 45 minutes a day. I haven't worked up to that length of time, but I really was hesitant to try it. So a friend challenged me and I, and I did it and she's doing far better at it than I am. But it really is not unpleasant at all. You've got that nice coconut flavor and it pulls all the toxins and bacteria out of your mouth. It also brightens your teeth. It gives you healthier gums. It prevents bad breath. You can experience increased energy, a clearer mind, decreased headaches, clearer sinuses, alleviated allergies, better sleep, clearer skin, regulated menstrual cycles, improved lymphatic system, and improved PMS symptoms. So that's a lot of good from just swishing some oil around in your mouth for about 15 minutes. So that's a challenge I'll, I'll pose to all of you to try that. Food combination and choices. We could talk again a whole session just on this, um, this topic. But a lot of us were raised to have the eggs, you know, scrambled eggs and hash browns, right? So um, that's how a lot of us were taught to eat. And generally, uh, you want to avoid combining the protein with the high starch, and you want to incorporate a non-starchy vegetable. So a much better option would be to have the scrambled eggs and spinach in, in the scrambled eggs, scrambled egg with spinach omelet perhaps, or a quiche. That's a far better option. And then the potatoes and the tomatoes could go well in a salad, but you really don't want to have them going together across because it's just um, more difficult to digest and it's, it causes food combination problems for some people. So that's just something to consider. A lot of uh, the way our meals are put together here are uh, putting that high starch with that, um, that protein. So think of adding the vegetable instead. So these are the highest protein vegetables that you can consume, and peas are at the top there with spinach. And then the potatoes are red, and the potatoes are red because I really encourage people to eat red or purple potatoes if they're going to eat potatoes at all. They're better for you than the white potatoes. Then we have broccoli, and there's those Brussels sprouts again. They're back. And corn. So what's trending in wellness? How many of you have heard of a detox or a cleanse? Yeah. It's, it's kind of all over the place. There's the 21-day detox, the seven-day cleanse, the four-day detox, the three-day cleanse, the one-day detox. I don't think that it's a bad thing. I just think that if, if you have a mental, or excuse me, if you have a medical condition, that you really should check with your physician before you go into either of these. Um, there's all different kinds out there. There's, there's pills, there's shakes, there's powders. Um, my concern is that the idea of a detox is to detoxify your liver, which is a good thing. However, um, some of these programs are pretty aggressive and they can make you really sick if you're on other medications or if you have other health conditions. So I see detox or cleansing in my inbox daily. I have pop-ups that come up on my computer about it. And so it's really, really a hot uh, trending thing right now. And so I don't think it's bad. Just really recommend that you you know, talk to a, a physician if it's something you're considering and you're on any sort of medication. The other thing that I tell uh, my clients is to count chemicals 
not calories. We've been trained for so long to count calories, how many calories. It even changed the labeling to have the calorie content listed. And that's nice information to know, but we live in a very chemical-laden society. And so this first picture is very typical of the standard American diet, unfortunately. And I think some of our cars are programmed to turn into these places. They've been doing it for so long. So what I encourage people to do is if you're going to go to one of these places, choose one of the best options you can there. You know, a lot of them now are offering salads. They're, they're not the best salads, but they're better than maybe some of the other options that they have there. Um, a lot of times the food is, is fried in vegetable or canola oil, which I really recommend and people get away from. And because they're preserving the food, there's lots of chemicals and preservatives in the food. So I just really encourage you or the people you love to try other options. It's exciting to see some other options pop up that are a little bit healthier. Um, but I know a lot of people in my life are very addicted to fast food and, and it's a part of their, their everyday everyday life, actually. The picture on the right, and I apologize, you can't read all those um, little headings around that woman, but the point of it is to say that we are often getting chemicals that are getting into our body from our shampoos, our eyeshadows, our lipsticks, our blushes, our, uh, let's see, Oh, the fake tan, the spray tans, um, hairspray, deodorant. Um, I think the perfume and the body lotions are the two most common. And, and I don't know about you, but I'm becoming more and more sensitive to uh, perfumes and colognes. I've, I've been where um, I've had to move. Somebody's got something something on that's really, really strong or, or just my body's not happy with it, so I'll have to move away from that. I know in some churches they have a fragrance-free zone because there are a lot of sensitivities to that. So there's a lot of chemicals in those products. And, and remember, this skin is our largest organ, so we're putting those chemicals right into our bloodstream. And just for an example, I brought this cream. It's actually local. It's called Just Good Stuff. And I am de I'm determined not to buy anything now that if I don't know what the ingredient is or can't figure it out and know that I'm not putting a chemical in my body, I don't buy it anymore. It does take some work. It takes some label reading. But it's really worth it to keep that toxic level down because we're, we're kind of bombarded by them anyway. So I don't want to add any additional to my body if I can help it. So we're going to come full circle and go back to talking about antioxidants, and, and we'd like to know uh, what your score is. And for the, for the purposes of the, of the telehealth, we'd like somebody to come up front here, and we'd like to scan you so that they can experience what it is you're getting to do here and, and have a better understanding. And then we'll open it up for questions. Oh, sorry. Chuck, there is not pain. Here, let's, just a second. But no, go ahead. I just wanted to repeat that first. Oh, um, prior to this lovely uh, disruptive technology, the only way to get your antioxidant score was a blood test. And the blood test costs about $800. So that's why you haven't had it done. <laughs> okay, so I need to put So while we're waiting for this part, as Chuck's getting his test done, 
nutrition isn't a one day, 45 minute talk. There's a whole bunch of parts that, um, uh, that have been <laughs> gone over and I would really love the feedback from local and from all of our sites in the rural communities by email or something on what more you would like to hear about this because I know Sabrina and Danielle would come back. Mm -hmm. Happy to. <laughs> and, um, and it's just, I, they have a six week program that they can actually do that I wish we could somehow build into our telehealth program. But uh, so uh, feel free to email me and call me and say, I wanna hear more about something. I wanna know why I'm supposed to eat so many Brussels sprouts or whatever it is. <laughs> And I have found some ways. I've learned that if you cut them in half and you grill them, they're way better than leaving them in one piece. Just uh, <laughs> something about having to bite in the uh, antioxidants. <laughs> or I mean antioxidants, into antioxidants, Brussels sprouts. Yeah. Okay. So can we tell people? Sure. So Chuck, Chuck, and Chuck just got his antioxidant score, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but um, he is in the yellow. So what that means is he's got an average antioxidant score. So why does Chuck care? Chuck is um, <laughs> eating lots of fruits and vegetables, right? Well, I, every, every day, essentially, I have uh, a cup of tomato juice or V8 juice. Just one? So a salad is at least at least a cup, probably. Okay, so so let's say that's if it's two cups, that's four mm -hmm. servings, and then the juice is five, and some. Okay, so we're getting close to six, which is kind of like where we'd like it to be. We want at least, we'd say six to nine. What, Probably a lot of us, when we went to school, we were told three or four fruits and vegetables a day. Remember basic four food group? Well, we, aren't, we don't do basic four anymore. It's a pyramid. And, you know, it's, it keeps changing. It's not a pyramid. Now it's a plate, and we cut it in fourths. And anyway, it's confusing. Six to nine is what's recommended, but the American Cancer Society, as Sabrina mentioned, um, is looking at uh, 12 to 13, you know, 11 to 13. Uh, that's a half a cup 13 times a day. Now... That's kind of scary on a lot of levels because it's not how we're used to eating. Mm -hmm. And if you talk about going to the grocery store and buying enough fruits and vegetables to get you that many servings a day for a week, that whole grocery cart and maybe another one is full of produce, right? It used to be that was the cheapest place in the grocery store. It's not anymore. It's mm -hmm. kind of the most expensive department in the grocery store. So. That's frightening, you know. Um, so it's hard. Chuck has an average score. I'm not saying it's bad, but it could be better. You're in the middle, okay? And so he needs to up that. You need to up that ante, and it's really important to look at the color of those vegetables. I have people that say, oh, I eat lots of fruits and vegetables. Well, what vegetables do you like to eat? Potatoes, corn, <laughs> Green beans once in a while. Yeah, I ate a lot of them. And not so much color there. And, you know, the potatoes and the corn are probably GMO. And so they're probably not getting the good quality fruits and vegetables that they need. So it, it's, it's a very um, conscious decision that you have to make when you're trying to decide what to eat. And so for most of us, it, it's not a simple thing to do. And the Americans, uh, are the U.S. Surgeon General has said, and JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association, have both said, come out with statements that said most Americans, in order to get the fruits and vegetables that they need, are probably going to need to supplement. And that's another whole can of worms. But what this device does is gives you a starting place. Because if I said to any of you today, before you came here, what does your nutritional wellness look like? You'd go, huh? <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? <laughs> How do you measure that? Most of us don't know. Knowing your antioxidant score is another biomarker that you're going to start hearing more about just because it's another tool. Back years ago, the only thing we worried about was blood pressure and weight. 
blood pressure and weight. Then, with, then it was weight, then it was girth circumference, and then it was cholesterol. And, and now we're, we know, most of us know our blood pressure, our weight, our cholesterol, our sugar value. And you should know your antioxidant level because it helps you make decisions about your lifestyle and how you eat. So I think I've just gone over. We could probably talk more and more and more <laughs> about this. But um, I hope we've brought some questions to mind. And if you would like to ask some, uh, is that yeah. appropriate? If you're, if you're all done. Yep, I am. I'm going to back this off over here because <laughs> it'll echo. Perfect. Okay, thank you very, very much. Lots of information. So you're telling me right now that this lettuce that I eat on my tacos, I should go to my taco restaurant and ask them to put this lettuce on my tacos or spinach in my tacos. Actually, the uh, Subway has spinach. Yeah, I don't, we're probably not supposed to. <laughs> no, no, actually, actually you, can. you can. Choose. No, you, you can. can choose. And yeah. so it's, oh, I want the spinach. I don't want the, the iceberg lettuce. Yeah, yeah darn it. <laughs> I've got to figure something out. It's not about my tacos. And my husband. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ooh, echo of laugh. That sounds pretty. So thank you again. Um, I At the beginning of the presentation today, we had a few uh, of the sites who checked in vocally um, with our technician. I'm going to go ahead and start with those sites. We're going to go around like we usually do, un uh, unmute your mic. Say hello. Tell me how many people are in your site. Um, and if you have any questions, we'll take care of them then. And then if, as I go, if, after I get through the list, if I've missed you, because we've only had a few with this hot weather and being summertime, then we'll come back to those I've missed, okay? So um, Billings, Montana. Okay, Clarkston, Clarkston Tri-State Memorial. Yeah, hi. We have a couple of questions. Okay. I'm trying. I'm trying to get them down here yet. Uh, one. We heard one comment that said corn and potatoes together was not okay, and another one that said corn and potatoes together was okay. Can you clarify what we heard for us? Okay. So with the corn, um, that's that's a higher starch. So you don't want to necessarily have that together with a protein. So it's better to have that separate. But corn is is uh, in that high protein group. That was on that slide. Is that does that clarify? What's your question? Uh, corn and potatoes. Oh, is it the yeah the tomato and potato combo? Corn and corn and potatoes. Corn and potatoes. Are they uh, good or bad? Yeah. One said they were bad. Well, they're not necessarily bad for. For food combining, the protein and the corn would not be a great combination. Okay, but maybe you heard the 12 dirty. Are they on the 12 dirty? The corn? On the corn and potatoes? Dozen. Dirty dozen. The, the potatoes are on the dirty dozen. That's correct. That doesn't mean that the potatoes are bad. It just means that you would want to buy those organic when possible. Yeah. Okay, did you have another question then, Bruce? <clears throat> Are they going to talk about artificial sweeteners? Or oh. Any comments on artificial sweeteners would be helpful, and then we'll just turn it over to you again. Okay. Avoid them at all costs. I have actually a whole presentation just around that topic. And so artificial sweeteners, I mean, maybe he has a specific sure. one that he is talking about because there's, I mean, I, don't, I, I agree personally that none of them are good, mm -hmm. but sometimes they're recommended stevia. Yeah. Or, Okay, stevia is not artificial, it's natural, so that comes from the stevia plant, so that's a very mm -hmm. good option. Stevia is good. Equal, okay. Splenda, those are bad. But stevia is Stevia natural. is good. I don't see it out and about. I see it in the grocery store, but I don't see it in convenience restaurants. I see the bad options out there. Um, I'm hoping that that will shift as the, the population demands it. But right now, you're seeing the equal and the Splenda out there, which is bad. And can't you get stevia in small packets that you can? You can. You can get. Carry them with you. You can get the individual packets. You can get liquid, and you can buy a big container and kind of divvy it up yourself as well. Okay, John. Do you guys have any more questions? Yeah, I got a question about mega three. Is that a good one? It's in oil oil area. 
Omega-3s. Omega-3 fats are really essential, and uh, they actually, we tend to consume too many omega-6s. So it is, um, generally you're getting those in your foods, your oily fishes, and then if not there like me, I don't like fish or sardines. So I get them through a supplement. Did that help out, John? That helped that one. Now we have a question about V8. Is that um, good for you, or is that just kind of average? It was a question about V8, like V8 juice? Yeah, not the V8 agency, the V8 juice in the can. <laughs> oh. Okay, I should have had a V8, that thing. Um, my only concern was, so read the label. Know, the, know everything that's listed on the label. And the sodium content can be quite high. So keep an eye out for that. So go for the lower sodium option. Yeah, yeah lower sodium is better. Okay. Or convenience also. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And how many wonderful attendees do you have today? I missed that. Twelve. Twelve. That's okay. It's the weather. We'll blame it on that. Okay, well, if you guys, that's a lot of really great questions, and so if you're done with questions, I'm going to go ahead and go on to the next location. Uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. We have six people, and we don't have any questions. Hi, Coeur d'Alene. Wish I was by your beautiful lake right now with all these people in the room with me. Okay, Miles City, Montana. Hi, we have six, no, seven people here today, and Thank I have you. one question, and that is, um, is there any research about the effects of high antioxidant scores on, uh, like, expected lifespan, life expectancy? Um, antioxidant scores are... Uh, usually higher in those lo longevity hotspots in the country. Yeah. And um, so I don't know if you've heard of that, but there's, you can do research on the world's longevity hotspots. There's nine of them in the world, and people are living to in their hundreds, and they're healthy, and they're still living. They're not in nursing homes. <laughs> and uh, there's only one longevity hotspot in the United States. So we need to wake up and figure out what we can do different. Um, and that one place is Loma Linda, California. Those areas that could be tested for right. antioxidants, they're, anti they're, they're very high. Their antioxidant scores in those parts of the country are much higher. They eat different than we do, and they eat more okay. fruits and vegetables and all of that. Yes. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you very much, Miles. Moses Lake. Hi, we have eight. Thank you. And we have several questions. Um, okay. One of them is, where can you get the, um, the antioxidant meter? That's a great question. So this is a le lease technology. It's designed by the University of Utah. And we have it at our clinic here in Spokane. We do travel with it. So if there's an opportunity to come your way, we I don't know a number that we would need to have participate. But if it's worth our while to come and bring the device, we'll, we'll definitely consider doing that. So write me an email and tell me that you want something to come to Moses Lake, and we'll get some people together and figure that out. This is Cindy. Okay. Okay. Um, does insurance pay for that? They do not. Not as of today. Lots of organic apples. <laughs> what did you say? Lots of organic apples. Um, <laughs> okay. Another question is, um, they used to say that palm oil and coconut oil was used on uh, popcorn in theaters and it was terrible for you. So what's different? I don't know what they're currently using. Um, palm oil is high in antioxidants. I'm not necessarily 
that's not my top oil. My top oil to recommend would be the coconut oil. Mm. And how often are you supposed to do the mouth? Oh, the oil pulling? Oil you, you can do it every day if you want to. It just really depends on your lifestyle. <laughs> how, how much do you have to have in your mouth? How much do you have? Tablespoon. One, One tablespoon. tablespoon. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. So I'm going to piggyback on the question about oil pulling really quick because my question that I wrote down um, for the 45-minute challenge, I wanted to know if you could split that up in a day and it would still work or is it better, That's don't you know? question. I, I don't know the answer. Okay. Um, I, I just know that uh, Dr. Mercola does it for 45 just to get that added benefit. So I don't know if breaking up would make a difference. I it, You know, if you did it twice a day, you would be getting just that benefit, you know, throughout the day. So I think either way is fine. Just start with the 15, though. See if you can get that much done once a day and then go from there. Sure, yeah. Uh, the question about um, is the antioxidant test um, paid for by your insurance? Um, insurance today has um, changed drastically, and you're probably noticing they don't pay for much in the, in the area of nutrition or um, wellness. And unfortunately, um, they don't pay for vitamin D tests. They used to pay for that. Doctors still prescribe vitamin D. They won't pay for that either. Unless you're morbidly obese and you've got some really bad problem, a lot of that is not covered by insurance. Thank you. Okay, um, Pullman Regional Hospital. There are six of us here. Thank today. you. And we have uh, one question. You listed uh, peas and corn as high protein vegetables. We had always been taught they were high carbohydrate. <laughs> I know, I know. So there's a there's a lot that's being retaught, just like with the uh, the low fat, you know. And that's interesting because we actually need fat for our brain to function properly. So yeah, they they are they are currently listed in the high protein category. All right, we just have hand raise there, the woohoo's in the background because we need our fat to a certain extent, yep. a couple tablespoons or I have it written down, yep. some in there. Um, with corn, though, that goes back to label reading, right? Because you can find corn in just about everything, yeah. but it's not necessarily the right kind of corn, which sounds really weird. But there's whole there's a whole college that figures out in the middle west, Midwest about the different ways they can use corn. <laughs> so just remember it's probably natural, organic corn and not necessarily yeah. the corn syrup that you find in everything else. So, um, Tenasket, North Valley Hospital. We don't have any questions right now. Okay, and how many are there today? Two. Thank you very much. Okay, that's who I have written down um, besides our Spokane area for uh, places that checked in. Did I miss anybody out there? Anchorage. Anchorage, there you go. I thought maybe... How many people? We have five. Thank you. And did you have any questions today? Yes, first I'd like to say thanks for the presentation, and then I'll turn over to Barry who has questions. Can I talk to you? Yes, just talking to the microphone. Hi, that was excellent. Um, we've been thinking about all of this that you've mentioned and practicing the vegetarian whole foods um, nutrition daily. And we find that when my husband does not he eat his nice, colorful salad or stir-fried vegetables or veggie fajita, all homemade with coconut oil, Wonderful. he does not function in foods, superfoods, that would enhance the thinking and uh, the frontal lobe functions, etc. Uh -huh. And we like the water concept. Now I realize this is something new that is an individual thing where you take half your weight um, in pound in whatever measurement, but I also like the fact that um, other sources, researchers, say that we do not take in enough vitamin D3. Uh -huh. um, Dr. Are you familiar with Dr. Wes Youngberg? He I am not. Wes Youngberg has done a lot of research 
in reversing lifestyle diseases such as diabetes, hypertension, cancer. And he listed many um, wonderful things that vitamin D3 does, mm -hmm. and including lowering, increasing your immune system. I can't remember everything. I changed notebooks, but it took it. I took a lot of notes in it, but he's, you can see him on YouTube. He travels all around the world, and he is responsible for reversing the diabetes epidemic in Guam that has more than the amount, number of um, diabetes than you, the whole United States. Wow. And he was making their choices from what they were doing mm -hmm. to the whole foods concept. And um, when he was invited, the leadership there says, you won't do it. You won't be able to do it because the people are stubborn. And that's what it really takes. You want to be proactive in your, in your health. And Absolutely. also, um, I said something else in here. I, we walked in late, and you said something about the, the man and UTI, or what is it, urinary problems? Did you oh, say about that? yes, that, that often can... Um, Oh, let's see. What did I say? <laughs> I think I have it right here. Yeah. I just don't want to misquote myself. So I love what you're saying and what you're doing. And D3 or D is a whole nother conversation. Um, we could talk a whole 45 minutes just on that. And it's actually a hormone, not a vitamin. And so a lot of people don't know that either. Um, I happen to have difficulty absorbing vitamin D. Um, so in, in neurological conditions such as MS and Parkinson's um, can cause constipation and it also ties in with the, urina the trouble with urination. Is that what you missed? Okay. Uh, right, right, but we did find an alternative because the doctors were all prescribing massive dosage of antibiotics. Yes. And we have not been able to talk about anything good for these children. It's called... <laughs> and he takes that in powder form in the morning and at night. And it's put off all the evil spirits of the UTI problem. That's wonderful. Anytime you can do something natural, I'm all for it. Thank and, you. And this, um, Yep, nope, that's okay. You said you have one more. There's just, we were having yeah, a little yeah, trouble um, hearing it because there was some background, background noise from another location. So. Um, I wanted to know, uh, we, we do try to buy organic, but it's not always readily available in Alaska. So how much toxicity is in non-organic and all this GMO that we can worry, we should worry about? You know, that's a great question. I can't answer that. That's, again, GMOs are a whole nother discussion. It depends on where the food is coming from, how it's treated. Okay, we I, I'm not an expert at all, but just be careful when you read GMO. Just keep in mind that just because it says genetically modified doesn't mean that it's bad for you. Sometimes they take one grape and put another grape together and they mix the grape vines. And sorry, I don't know all the details, but they didn't necessarily add any chemicals to it, but they're genetically modifying the way the plant grew originally. So just keep in mind that you got to read those labels because genetically modified sometimes means that they just took and spliced a plant onto another plant to create something. Um, it's not always that they're putting new chemicals or putting chemicals in it. That's it. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Was there anybody, other locations out there that I missed? Okay. Spokane, do we have any last questions? <laughs> Can I go ahead and finish it? My question My is, question does, is it have, does it have uh, to do with the oil pulling? Mm -hmm. Does it have to be with coconut oil? Is it does not. You can use um, grapeseed oil. Um, there's other options out there. There is. There okay. is. So it's kind of a preference of taste. Do not use canola or vegetable oil, no, though. But okay. Yeah, you All can right. use other oils. Grapeseed is a good option. Like okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Arlene and Ivan, do you have any questions? Okay. Hey, thank you, everybody. Um, we will see you again next month, August 12th.
Sorry, somebody wanted. I know it's August 12th, I think, or August 11th. My brain is not attached to my computer today. August 11th, Cindy. Thank August you. 11th. You're awesome. Okay, we will see you next month. Um, I have a confirmation waiting on for our speaker next month, but um, uh, and I will get that information out as soon as I get it. But um, I very much wanted to thank both of you for coming today and um, look forward to hearing the feedback about coming back and these right. other locations. And um, we always, at the end of our presentations, Parky, oh. uh, oh, everybody right. gets a Parky. Oh. <laughs> yeah. As if just, it's our thank you. thank you. I'll explain a little bit more about what he means, but if you, ever, if you have a Parky with you, you're never alone. So oh. if you have a Parkinson's patient with you, thank you're you. never alone. Thank so. you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Feel free to contact Cindy to get hold of us, or you can put us on your website. I sometimes get questions about the PowerPoints. Sure. Um, sure. Is it okay if I can, if somebody emails me or you calls, I can get the PowerPoint? Okay. And then with this will be on DVD. If you know anybody who wants more information but didn't get to make it, uh, let me know, and we'll have our volunteers help me make DVDs and get them out to you. Thank you, everybody. Stay cool. Stay safe. Have a good month, and we'll see you next month. And go on the website and check out the Parkinson's Power Summit because it's going to be really cool. Thanks.